Hello, my name is Cynthia. How are you today? For those of you who may have a speaking exam in English, this video is for you. For the rest of you who are happy you don't have a speaking exam in English, feel free to stay and watch this video. If you've ever traveled to Africa, perhaps the phrase, the big five, means something to you. Simply put, it means the leopard, lion, rhinoceros, buffalo, and elephant are the five most difficult animals in Africa to hunt on foot. Now let's take the same idea and talk about the five things to avoid in a speaking exam. Number five, avoid chewing gum. Yes, as examiners, we appreciate that you want your teeth to be white and your breath to be fresh. But watching your chewing gum travel around your mouth as you speak is not appreciated. It also doesn't help your pronunciation or overall delivery. If you forget and start the exam with gum, just apologize quickly and remove it. Think of us as dentists and remember that chewing gum doesn't help us do our work. Number four, when you are asked at the introduction, how are you today? Avoid saying, I'm stressed. We know you are. The people who created the exam know you are stressed. That's why stage one is an icebreaker or warm-up stage. And as examiners, we try to create a positive atmosphere for your exam from the moment you enter the room. So saying you're stressed doesn't help you feel confident, nor does it help us in creating that positive atmosphere for you. Instead, try answering like you would like to be. If you're not so well, say, I'm okay, thank you, how are you? Or if you'd like to add a little humor, thank you for asking, but I think I'll feel much better when I leave. Use this opportunity to say something unique instead of saying the obvious, which we hear so many times over and over. Number three, when you finish your exam, avoid asking how you did. For starters, we are not allowed to answer that. No examiner has the authority to give you that answer when you finish. In addition, asking that doesn't help show your confidence in speaking English. Instead, it shows doubt, maybe fear, or insecurity, none of which help you to pass. Think of the saying, if you have to ask how much a Lamborghini costs, you probably can't afford it. So if you have to ask if you passed, maybe you shouldn't pass? Instead, leave the exam feeling and believing you passed whether you know it or not. Keep the atmosphere positive. Number two, during the exam, listen to what your examiner tells you. Avoid drifting or daydreaming. The reason we say certain things to you during the exam is to help you. If you don't follow our instructions, what does that mean? You don't understand or you're not listening. Well, either of these thoughts are not helping you to pass. For example, when we tell you that the exam has five stages and each stage is about five minutes long, remember this. Then in stage two, this means you have approximately two minutes to summarize your two options and so does your partner. We as examiners should not have to interrupt to remind you of the time limit. Likewise, if an examiner tells you that he or she is your friend with a problem in the role play, answer using appropriate informal register. Show your examiner you listen. And the number one thing to avoid is a quick fix. There's a trend to try these quick fixes when preparing for a speaking exam. So what does that mean? 
Well, it means using phrases that have been memorized in the hopes of impressing the examiner. And rarely does this work. Any examiner immediately recognizes pre-rehearsed language. These fossilized phrases don't impress us, nor do they help you to pass. For example, if you say last but not least, and then talk on and on, you have not used that phrase correctly. Another example, I firmly believe option one is better because of blah blah blah. Well, firmly, firmly believe is rarely used in spoken everyday English. Perhaps in a courtroom or a debate, yes, but in a role play discussing several options with a friend, it is inappropriate. So what's the bottom line? If you do these things, will you fail? Maybe not. But if you avoid them, your chances of passing are better. Books are a wonderful tool, but the best way to prepare for a speaking exam is to practice speaking English daily with the words that you already know. Focus on your delivery. Is it clear? Or are the ums or the false starts distracting for the listener? Thank you for listening. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to go to my website, crazyaboutenglish.webs.com, and click on the Contact Me page. Complete the information and choose a time. In the message box, type the big five and I will contact you with a, a date for our free 15 minutes on Skype. It's not always easy to see the big five on your first African safari, but avoiding these five things in a speaking exam is an easy thing to do, and the results are the same, exciting and maybe even exhilarating.